Whoa, it's, it's freaking windy out here. So uh, I'm out here by the water and I have some Freewell long exposure filters. I wanted to fly the Mavic 2 Pro today, but it's freaking windy. It's like blowing me everywhere. So what I did is something pretty cool. So I've done steel shots and they actually look pretty wild from what I saw looking at my little uh, cell phone to see what they look like. But check out behind me. Come on, gimbal, come around. There we go. So behind me, you'll see right here, I have the actual Mavic 2 Pro sitting on my car. It's got a, right now it's got an ND1000 on it. Here, let me just turn this way so I don't have to scream. It's got an ND1000 on it, which is probably a little too dark for the Mavic 2 Pro, but you can certainly get some interesting still shots that you're gonna see in this video. Now, Freewell has four filters in their long exposure series. They're ND, neutral density filters. So they're like super dark Roy Orbison sunglasses. Like they are really dark. And uh, when you put them over the camera on the Mavic 2 Pro, or if you put them on a Mavic 2 Zoom or any, any drone for that matter, or any camera, I should say, well, it doesn't let a lot of light in. So on the Mavic 2 Pro, I played with the aperture, played with the shutter, and I took a series of photos and you're going to see them here and they work out quite well. Now the Freewell filters go from an ND128 all the way up to an ND1000, which is really dark. So here we go. Check this out. The image you see before you was shot with an ND128 filter and the ISO was set to 100. Now for all the long exposure shots I'm gonna show you, you should always set your ISO on a bright sunny day to 100 because anything higher than 100 will cause more noise to come into the image. All we're doing here with these ND filters is just basically placing a dark piece of glass over top of the lens of the camera. So less light comes in. So this first image here, you see, look what's happened. I have left the shutter open for exactly a total of one second. Now look at the water. The water here is starting to get a little bit blurry. So if I just zoom in, you can see, look what happens over here. See over here, the tops of the plants are starting to get blurry as they're blowing in the wind and the trees as well. They get blurry. And if we look down at the ground, looking this way and that way, the water's blurry and so again are the plants here. Look at the water. So the objective here is maybe to make the clouds appear since they're moving in the sky, maybe make them look a little bit wispy and blurry as well and make the water look pretty blurry. What happens a lot of times when you're trying to do long exposure photography is that sometimes things get too blurry and basically what happens is that everything gets blurry because the clouds are moving and the trees are moving and the water is moving. So you have to get a sweet spot. Kind of hard to do when the wind's blowing, as you saw, but here we go. All right, so this is a one second exposure. Now I'm gonna move out to a two second exposure. There's two seconds. You can see what's happened. Look at the water's getting blurrier, the plants, vegetation, the tops, but here the trees, they are larger in size and in the distance. They're staying a lot more in focus and not as blurry, but the clouds, only over here we're seeing some wispiness because that's the direction of the clouds, they're moving. Let's go to three seconds. Whoa, three seconds, we're starting to get a little bit overexposed. See back at two seconds, it looked pretty good. There's three seconds. Once again, this is a ND128 filter. You can let a lot of light in for a longer amount of time and it won't overexpose, but you, we're getting to the limits here. This is three seconds, this is four seconds, and the image isn't looking so good, but look it, my water's turning into a skating rink. It's looking pretty decent down there. Let's go up to five seconds. Whoa, that's overexposed. You really can't save this image. If I had a raw image of this, and I tried to save it in post-production. No, everything's blown out. It's, it's pretty much shot. You're, that image is done. And if I go up to six seconds, well, that's pretty much, I don't think I have a seven seconds. No, seven, six seconds is quite a bit. So if I go backwards here, let's see, the, probably the best one was three seconds. Four seconds is a little too much in the clouds up here, as you can see but uh, three seconds was pretty good. And then if I go down to two seconds, well now the water here is a little bit more detailed than in three seconds. That's because in three seconds, we left the shutter open longer. So the ripples in the water are starting to smooth out. All right, let's go to another ND filter. 
Now I've placed an ND256 on the Mavic 2 Pro. An ND256 is eight f-stops. You know, it's blocking the light by eight f-stops. So the light coming in, it's a bright sunny day. I've got this dark filter over front and I've left the shutter open for one second. And this is the image. That's not bad. That's one second. That's a really good image. And if we zoom in, Let's just zoom in here a little bit. So I've got it way zoomed in. Look at the tops of the plants are blurry. The bottoms are less blurry and that's what you want. Here at one second, the trees are starting to get a little bit blurry. So the wind must've been really howling when I took this picture. And uh, even on this side here, a little bit blurry, but let me just zoom out because you know I'm zoomed right in. So zooming out, zooming out, zooming out, zooming out. And there we go. We're back to normal and it all looks like it's in perfect focus. The clouds look good. Got a little bit of blurriness down here, which actually looks like a decent photo. Let's go to two seconds. There's a two second exposure. Once again, I'm at ISO 100 and I do have an ND256 on the lens. There's two seconds. There was one second. Look at the water and look at the clouds. Now here's two seconds. Look at the water and look at the clouds. You see, we're starting to get what we're looking for. It's starting to look pretty good. Let's go to three seconds. Three seconds, check out the clouds. We're losing definition on this side because that's the way they're blowing in the wind. Over here, they're sort of coming at an angle where they can stay in, stay in actual focus. But over here, they're moving a little bit faster, so they're starting to go a little bit blurry. And the tops of the vegetation right here, same thing, the plants. The plants, look at that. And the water right up to us. It looks really weird. But that's a really good image because look at over here, if I zoom in, a little bit i'm going a little bit more um these trees aren't too bad for the distance you know like i've really ex i've really blown up the image here but uh let's go back out to the full size image now let's take it up to uh four seconds there's four seconds there's three seconds more definition in three seconds because when you go to four seconds that shutter is open for four seconds while while the wind is howling everything's moving in the image in those four seconds so the only thing that should remain in focus for the four second exposure would be objects that are not moving everything that is moving should be blurry so the clouds are blurry the water is blurry the tops of the plants the trees become blurry down here at the bottom everything's nice and blurry and let's go up to five seconds whoa five seconds we're starting to get a little bit too bright go back to four seconds Yep, it looks pretty good, but you can see here at four seconds that the sun was not shining back here. It was only shining in the foreground, a little bit in the background, but here there was a black spot. And when I go up to five seconds, everything's lit up. So there we go. It's not too bad. And let's go to six seconds. Six seconds, we're getting at the limit with the ND256. Because look at that. The trees are starting to get blown out with the sunlight. That's a little bit too much. The clouds look pretty cool and the water looks pretty cool but I think that's too much. Let's go to seven seconds. Seven seconds, yeah, that's a way blown out. And I don't know if I have eight seconds. No, I only have it up to seven seconds because I could see I was getting blown out. All right, let's go all the way back. Four seconds, three seconds, two seconds, and one second. So the sweet spot for an ND256 on a bright sunny day at ISO 100 seems to be about five seconds. Four seconds to five seconds looks good. As soon as you get to six seconds, a little too bright. All right, let's move up to the next ND filter, which is the ND400. Now what you see before you is an image taken with an ND400 filter placed over the front of the Mavic 2 Pro. Now you have to remember when I use the ND128, then the ND256, and now the ND400, the images are all exposed for the same amount of time, at least these first ones. This is, an, this is a one second exposure. So one second with a 128 filter is a little bit different than one second with a 256 filter and different than an ND400 filter because each of those filters is darker as they progress in higher number. So when you leave something open for one second and it has a dark filter in front of it, which is darker than the first one and darker than the second one I showed you, then that means the images will still have the same amount of blurriness. However, the image exposure will be different. So that's why right now, this is an ND400 filter. And if you look at the exposure of the image, it doesn't look bad, but it looks a little bit dark. Well, that's because once again, I've left the shutter open for one second to let more light in. 
and it's a bright sunny day, but check out, it's because I have an ND400 filter over the actual camera lens. But we're still getting nice motion blur on the water at the bottom and in the vegetation. And we see it at the tops of the plants here. I'll just zoom in so you can actually see tops of the plants. Very nice. Everything is nice focus here. And the trees, because one second with that wind howling at one second exposure time, the trees are moving, but insufficiently moving to actually cause blurriness for one second. But as we move up to two seconds to three seconds, you'll see the blurriness. So here's two seconds. Whoa, look what happened there from one second. You leave that shutter open a little bit longer, it starts to look a little bit blurry. Let's go up to three seconds. Three second exposure. The clouds are looking really good at three seconds and so is the water. This is a nice image. Let's go up to four seconds. So now we can go a little bit higher in our exposure for the amount of seconds than we could with the ND256 and the ND128 because now we have an ND400 on. So we can actually leave the shutter open longer and not overexpose the image. So here's four seconds. The image looks great. Let's go to five seconds. Look at that. It looks like almost a skating rink out here. Really nice. The clouds have moved quite a bit. They look really cool. It looks like a big vista plane here. And look at the bottom. The more something moves, the more it becomes blurry. And if it moves a lot, it will actually become invisible after a while. That's why you can't really see the texture of the water because it's become invisible. If I go back to one second, see as I move back, look at how the texture is coming back. And there's one second. That water is exactly the same in that five second exposure, except in the five second exposure, the shutter is staying open so long that it just looks blurry like the tops of the vegetation here and everything. So if I zoom in, you can see there's the water and there's the vegetation over here and uh, over there looks pretty decent. And look at the clouds up here. Those clouds look pretty cool. So let's just jump out of that and go to our next setting, which is, uh, that's an exposure of five seconds. Now we're up to six seconds. So you can see we can go pretty high and let's go up to seven seconds. There's a seven second exposure. The clouds are still detailed, but we are starting to get to the limits of the exposure. And it's getting a little bright around here. And also leaving the shutter open for seven seconds, that's a lot of movement happening. So with that wind blowing, everything begins to move. And that's where as a photographer, you have to decide, hmm, you know, I could really make things look really cool in the clouds and on the ground. But when you put trees in the image, they're moving. So when you do a seven second exposure with an ND400, you would want something in the image such as buildings or maybe something flat, like a big piece of water and mountains in the back or whatnot. So you want the clouds to be blurry because they're moving and you want maybe water to be blurry, but you want something right here in the center to be non blurry. And that makes a really fantastic image. So if you put mountains or hills or whatnot, well, they're not going to move in the wind or buildings. They'll all look pretty cool. So let me just go up one more at seven seconds. The max the Mavic 2 goes is up to eight seconds. What's important to note here is that with an ND400, which is nine F stops, you can actually take an image at eight second exposure ISO 100 with the Mavic 2 Pro with that type of filter. So you can get something pretty cool looking here. This is actually usable. You could use this, but once again, as I noted, there's too much wind. So all these trees here, they're all moving. All these trees here, they're all moving. This water is moving. These clouds are moving. So everything becomes like a blur because of the movement. So it's better to have the hills and the mountains. All right, let's go to the next filter and the last one, which is an ND1000. So what you see here in front of you is an ND1000. This is a piece of glass that is almost black. It's 10 F stops. It lets hardly any light through. The only way you'll ever get an image out of your Mavic 2 Pro is if you, well, leave the shutter open for a while. So this is at ISO 100. And the reason I have it at ISO 100 is because if you put it any higher, you're gonna get noise in the image. So it's at ISO 100 and I've left the shutter open for one second. So you should see the exact same level of blurriness in the image as when I left the shutter open for one second with the ND128, the ND256, the ND400, and now the ND1000. The only difference you should see is that my image is darker. Why is it darker? Because I'm letting less light in to the actual sensors. So that's one second exposure. To me, it's a little too dark because the sun is bright. 
Everything's lit up, but look at how dark it looks. So let's go to two seconds. Two seconds looks pretty good. We already know that five seconds is about what we want. Three seconds, we're getting the blurriness up here as we've seen in the other images. Four seconds, and let's go to five seconds. So five seconds seems to be the sweet spot for a lot of these images. But if you look with the ND1000, five seconds, it's still kind of dark. So let's take it up to six seconds. We see at six seconds, it's looking pretty good, but six seconds, the wind is really blowing the trees. Look, they're starting to get blurry back here. Everything's starting to get a little too blurry. So, uh, but the clouds look pretty cool. Let's go up to seven seconds. Clouds look, they're stretching out because I'm leaving the shutter open, but the wind is causing everything else to get blurry as we've seen in the other images. And if I take it up to eight seconds, same thing. But one thing to note on here with an ND1000, look at it at eight seconds. The image is actually usable. Nothing is overexposed. Well, actually, let's go and take a look at if the sun went out. What would the image look like? Here we go. So there's eight seconds and the sun is away back here, but it's not up here. So now the image is kind of dark. So that's what it looked like with the sun and without the sun. And there it is again with the sun. Now, what I tried to do is I tried to stand in front of the camera right here, but and I was trying to get myself in focus with my little CD on the background, Captain Drone. So I would look perfectly in focus and everything else would look blurry. But the problem is standing in that blowing wind for eight seconds is extremely difficult. I tried to keep my body as still as I could. I tried multiple images and this is the best one I could get where I was standing the most still. Because with that wind blowing, even though I only move a few millimeters or maybe half an inch every now and then when the wind's hitting me, it's still moving. If you take a look at, uh, look at my ears. So you see around my ears, you can see that my ear was here at one time. Now it's over here. I've moved. So that's why you need images to stand, stay very still. It would have been really cool if I could have been perfectly in focus and not moved and everything else was blurry. That would have made a really cool image. But that's what you get on a windy day. Here's the box of the filters I used in this demo. And here's the actual filters I actually put on my Mavic 2. These are the long exposure filters, comes four in a set, and they are made of aircraft aluminum, and they have many, 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 many coatings over top of them to give them that perfect darkness so there's no artifacts, no weird things when your camera's not getting a lot of light through these filters, no strange objects appearing in front. It all works quite good. So these are very pro. Now you're probably wondering why the hell would I spend over a thousand dollars on a drone to do long exposure photography by putting the drone on top of my car? Well, you wouldn't. That's just me showing you how it works. When you're going to do it on your drone and you want to do long exposure photography, you need two things, a sunny day, very, very bright sun and no wind because you're going to fly the drone straight up in the air and you're going to make the camera look straight down. That's the best way to do it. And whatever's below you, you need two things there. You need something moving and something stationary. So the stationary object with your drone being perfectly still in the air is going to be perfectly in focus and whatever's moving is going to be a blur. So it could be a river below you, you know, and the shores are going to stay stationary and look pretty good. It could be a road below you, cars moving, the sides look pretty good, not moving, all sorts of things, whatever you want, people moving, all sorts of things. Do whatever you're allowed to fly over in your country, in your state, in your province, in your area, whatever's legal. Well, that's how you do long exposure photography. A lot of people do it at beaches. You know how the water is rushing up against the shore at a beach. Beach looks really cool and the water looks silky smooth. You see that a lot in photos and that's basically how you do it. And your DJI Mavic 2, your Zoom or your Pro can do that if they have those long exposure ND filters. With all that said, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions on long exposure photography, we'll post them below. If you want to fly with an ND1000 forward, it's going to look terrible. Don't do that. If you want to fly with an ND400 forward, yes, you can, but make sure it's a bright sunny day. If you tilt the camera down just a little bit so that it gets more land than sky, you will get that really cool cinema effect. It's going to look like the ground is rushing up against you really, really fast while the horizon is perfectly stable. And that's what long exposure filters do. So try them out for yourselves. Let me know below your success. 
post a comment below, let me know how well they worked out for you. And if you want to know where to get these filters, I'm going to post a link below and it's going to take you to the Amazon website. You can also go to the Freewell Gear website if the Amazon website doesn't have them and they'll have them there. Or if you live in some far off country and you use a different shopping experience, well then post the link to where you got them below so other people can benefit from where you buy them as well. Anyways, thanks for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Many more review videos on the way. Take care and we'll catch you in the next video.